The Singapore Strait is one of the busiest waterways in the world. Together with the Strait of Malacca, it is a maritime corridor of over 400 nautical miles in length. An estimated one-third of the world's traded goods pass through these waters annually, a figure which is expected to increase as the region's economies continue to grow. At its narrowest point, there are just three nautical miles between the shores of Singapore and Indonesia, while the navigable channel is reduced to less than two nautical miles. Safe Passage in the Singapore Strait is a set of two videos and an interactive training module. Together, they offer valuable information for experienced bridge teams, even if they have transited the strait before, and useful advice for those visiting for the first time. There are around 1,000 ship movements each day in the Singapore Strait. As a result, watchkeeping officers can find themselves having to deal with traffic situations involving a wide range of vessel types and sizes. This is especially challenging in poor visibility. So detailed voyage planning, good seamanship and situational awareness are essential to safe navigation. The hydrographic data is regularly checked, so when calculating safety factors on depth and contour settings, make sure you have the most recent updates. There are strong tidal streams in the strait, which must be remembered, as these can make a big difference when crossing lanes or picking up a pilot. The pilot boarding grounds for Singapore and Malaysia are all to the north of the TSS. Sambu, the pilot boarding ground for Indonesian ports, is to the south. If you are going to pick up or drop off a pilot, it's good practice to come to the side of the separation lane nearest to the boarding ground in good time to avoid having to cross at the last moment. Navigation in the strait can be demanding, so everyone needs to be properly rested at the start. Traffic movement is always changing, Watchkeeping officers need to know their ship's position and maintain good situational awareness so that they can make appropriate navigational choices. It's important to have the right level of bridge personnel. Always follow your company's SMS. All vessels must proceed with caution. They need to maintain a speed consistent with safe navigation. As always, keep to your company's SMS, but it is strongly recommended to have the engine room manned throughout the transit. In addition to following all applicable rules of the road, officers are well advised to take a look at Rule 10 concerning navigation in a TSS. Remember, being in a TSS does not give you the right of way, so use good seamanship. This could mean slowing down to help resolve a traffic situation, even when you have the right of way. Always maintain a safe distance from other vessels. Keep an eye out for the weather. Sudden thunderstorms with heavy rain can occur between June and August and October to December. The visibility can become moderate or poor very quickly. Haze can also reduce visibility. Shipmasters are advised to keep a proper lookout and navigate with caution. In addition to following all applicable rules of the road, ships shall comply in particular with rules 19, 20 and 35 concerning the conduct of vessels in restricted visibility, the exhibition of navigation lights and the use of sound signals. In darkness, vessels crossing the TSS and all precautionary areas are requested and recommended to display a signal of three all-round green lights in a vertical line. This indicates the intention to cross to all nearby vessels. In the TSS, it's rarely possible to always keep strictly to the planned course line. Watchkeeping officers must be prepared to move to one side of the lane or the other to overtake or even when being overtaken. 
as well as the traffic in their immediate surroundings. They are advised to look well ahead to see what situations may be developing. Information on other vessels' intentions may be requested from the VTIS. The Singapore VTIS operates 24 hours a day. It is an advisory service and covers the three straight reporting sectors 7, 8 and 9, known as straight rep. Reporting to it is mandatory when going into a new sector. Uh, station calling Singapore VTIS, this is uh, VTIS West. Please give me your call sign and name. Over. VTIS West, VTIS West, Marvin Mess. It's good practice to inform the VTIS of your intentions at that time. There are teams of operators for each of the straight rep sectors. Mariners are recommended to follow the advice of the VTIS whenever possible because the operators can have a better understanding of the traffic movements over a wider area. But remember that following navigational advice given to you by the VTIS does not give you the right of way. The bridge team alone is responsible for the safe navigation of the vessel. Going east, you will enter the Singapore section of the TSS at Sector 7. Entering Sector 7, it's mandatory to report in to the VTIS on VHF Channel 73. If you are transiting, you will be asked for information including your destination and whether you are carrying any dangerous goods. If you are, they will ask for details of IMO class and weights. You will not have to give this information again during your transit as the VTIS pass it on from sector to sector. If you are going into the Port of Singapore, they will already have this information in the pre-arrival notification. There are four precautionary areas in the Singapore Strait where you may encounter a high density of crossing traffic. Eastbound. The first of these is at the start of the sector, where many vessels may be crossing at all angles. Take care, as smaller, local vessels may not strictly follow the rules of the road and may not answer VHF calls. Many of the eastbound vessels going to the ports of Tanjung Palapas and Singapore will pick up a pilot in Sector 7. There are three boarding grounds to the north of the westbound lane. So be aware that some eastbound vessels may turn to port at this time in order to reach them. If you are picking up a pilot, Put your pilot boarding ground as your destination in AIS. If not, checking the AIS information of nearby vessels may warn of their intentions, but never rely solely on AIS for collision avoidance. Remember that not all ships are fitted with AIS, and even if they are, it may be switched off or the information provided may be incomplete or incorrect. Also, avoid using VHF for collision avoidance. This can lead to confusion and hinder transmission of important VTIS information. Always comply with the call regs. On leaving the precautionary area, check your position to be certain that you are still in the eastbound lane. Throughout the strait, it's essential to keep within the channel limits. To the south of the TSS at this point, there may be some ship-to-ship -ship transfer activity in the anchorage. Be aware that in the dark, ship's navigation lights may be obscured by the working lights from these vessels and from the southern shore. Other vessels may be joining the TSS from the Durian Strait to the south and the Nipa anchorage to the north. Keep a good lookout. High vigilance is recommended especially during the hours of darkness. There's a sharp alteration of course north into the Phillip Channel at the Raycon Delta. Be aware of the risk of converging traffic during the turn. Also, be sure you start the turn early enough as there is shallow water outside the channel. This is also the start of the deep water route. If your vessel draws less than 15 meters, 
you are not classified as a deep draft vessel. So come to the starboard side of the Philip Channel early to avoid impeding vessels going into the deep water route. VLCC and other deep draft vessels shall maintain an underkeel clearance of at least 3.5 meters at all times. They are advised to navigate at a speed of not more than 12 knots and to avoid overtaking. The channels are narrow and frequent checking of position is recommended. Navigational aids to help you do this include the Raycons at Takong, Karang Helen Ma, and Karang Banting. Shallow draft vessels may use the deep water route if there are no deep draft vessels in it. Please notify the VTIS if this is your intention. Be aware that vessels may slow down or even stop in the TSS in the eastern part of Sector 7 and also the western part of Sector 8 to take on stores. Never be complacent in the TSS. Keep a proper lookout at all times. Avoid trying to guess at other ships' movements. The next sector is Sector 8. When entering Sector 8, reporting is mandatory to the VTIS on VHF Channel 14. Please give me your name and call sign, over. Approaching from the northern end of the Philip Channel, there is a course alteration to starboard and a few shallow waters and reefs near the traffic lane. Helen Mar Reef, Buffalo Rock and Batu Berhanti, where tidal considerations can be important as there is deep water close to shallow water. Check your position regularly to ensure your vessel stays within the traffic lane and pay attention to the VHF to hear what the VTIS is saying. The TSS lane now enters the first of two precautionary areas where crossing traffic can be heavy, especially soon after dawn, when ferries can be seen departing from the ports in Batam to join the TSS westbound lane heading for Singapore. In the other direction, you can expect frequent fast ferries crossing between the port of Singapore and Indonesia. In addition, there are often fishing boats in the eastbound lane. They usually start fishing in the early hours of the morning. These small boats are not visible to the VTIS's radar nor to your ship's radar. Their movements can be unpredictable they may not be displaying the correct lights and shapes. There may also be many tugs and toes crossing at any time of the day and sometimes at night. Vessels departing from the ports of Singapore or Indonesia may cross the precautionary areas to join the traffic lanes of the TSS. Also, look out for vessels slowing down and turning to port in order to approach one of the pilot boarding grounds north of the westbound channel. Check the nearby vessel's AIS data for information on their intentions. There are five pilot boarding grounds to the north of Sector 8. The movement of Singapore pilots is managed from a central control room where everything possible is done to ensure that pilots get to their booked ETA on time. It is a separate organization from the VTIS. A tracking system means that delays are very rare, but with over 500 pilot assignments per day, delays do sometimes happen. You must contact the pilot service two hours before your ETA to confirm the booking on VHF Channel 20. You can expect to find vessels waiting near the boarding grounds, especially around the eastern boarding grounds Charlie and Bravo. Vessels are advised to calculate and adjust their speed in the hours before arrival to avoid having to wait near a boarding ground and cause congestion. When approaching the boarding grounds, it is strongly recommended that they should do so at a safe speed, following all applicable rules of the road. In particular, 
the separation distance and factors listed in Rule 6, such as the state of visibility, available sea room and traffic density, among others. Only one vessel will be scheduled to arrive at Bravo and Charlie at any one time, and the next vessel will be scheduled at an interval of not less than 15 minutes later. Vessels arriving too early may have to wait, maintaining a minimum separation distance of one nautical mile from the vessel ahead. Information on vessels proceeding to these boarding grounds will be provided by the VTIS. Crossing the westbound lane to pick up a pilot can present a challenge. Vessels should be positioned early on the north side of the eastbound lane so that they won't have to cross the entire TSS at once. Shipmasters are advised to cross at right angles to the TSS in compliance with the coal regs and the good practice of seamanship. If they are unsure of any westbound vessel's intentions, the bridge team can ask the VTIS for information. Some of the boarding grounds are close to anchorages, so approach these at a safe speed, keeping a safe distance from the vessels in the anchorage. If you are crossing during the hours of darkness, be sure to display the signal of three all-round green lights in a vertical line. Allow enough time and sea room when picking up a pilot. Okay. On a large vessel, it can take up to 10 minutes for the pilot to board, reach the bridge and finish the master pilot exchange. So ensure that there is sufficient time for that to be completed safely. The boarding arrangements must exactly follow international standards. The pilot's safety is the first concern. Continuing your transit of Sector 8, even if you have the right of way, it may be good seamanship to slow down to help resolve potential close quarter situations. Think twice before you overtake in the narrow parts of the TSS. When entering Sector 9, Reporting is mandatory to the VTIS on VHF Channel 10. Sector 9 is generally less crowded than Sector 8, as the TSS is wider. However, the large precautionary area that takes up about half of the sector can still be very busy with crossing traffic. At first light, there may be tugs and barges crossing. Fast ferries may cross at any time. You must be aware of them and know where they are. And look out for vessels entering and leaving the East Johor Strait to join the eastbound lane. Near the wheelover point towards the eastern end of Sector 9, the lane narrows slightly. Beware of vessels converging. There can be eddies when the current is running strongly so it's good practice to avoid the shallow water near the eastbound channel's northern boundary. Passing Horsba Light to starboard marks the end of Sector 9 and of the Singapore Strait. Please notify the VTIS. You're leaving Sector 9, switch over to Channel 16, have a good watch, VTIS is out. Detailed voyage planning, good seamanship and situational awareness are essential to safe navigation in the strait. Make sure your bridge is adequately manned as specified by your SMS. Maintain good communication with the VTIS throughout your transit. We hope you found this video helpful. Have a safe passage.